What is going on, everybody? Josh, come back here with another video. And today, been a wall for a minute, but we are finishing off this mock draft round three of three of our 7.0 mock. Been getting some pretty good reviews on the first uh, couple of rounds. And of course, we're going to be modifying this every single week, including this one. So, if you guys are new, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that YouTube stuff. If you guys want to talk with me, of course, I got links down in the description for all that goody, good, good stuff. Let's kick into this. Let's have some fun. Of course, if you guys are new, check out the first two rounds. I think that's going to be a little bit more informative than anything that I'm going to do right now. But let's kick this off. Let's have, let's have some fun. Number 65 with the Brownies. We traded back, if I'm not mistaken, with the Lions so they can move up and select Carson Strong. Pretty good idea in my eyes. But we have gotten Jordan Davis, and I think that is it. I'm pretty sure Jordan Davis was the only pick that we've had right now for the Browns. So let's look at positions that we could be looking at. Wide receiver is something that I would target. I'm looking at David Bell right here. I don't think Odell Beckham Jr. really is the future of this team. David Bell could be a legit perimeter wide receiver. I think he could be a wide receiver too. Don't know if he has a wide receiver one upside. He does have the upside, but I just don't know if he actually reaches it. Similar to like a Juju Smith-Schuster where I think he fits best in that wide receiver two role. Uh, Jalen Tolbert, another guy who I think would be a really good addition to this team. You could look at offensive linemen just to see who's here. I just, I don't think anybody's worth it. I think that offensive line's good enough for the Browns. I mean, obviously they have a great freaking offensive line, but I'm saying offensive line depth is good enough. Linebacker, I just don't see where we're assuming Henry Teotel and Mike Jones are going to be returning. Um, I just don't really see anybody who I'd feel comfortable taking. Even Owen Papo, he's in that will, uh, that will zone, and that's pretty much what you got last year in JOK. So realistically, my positions are wide receiver and edge. I just, I mean, honestly, um, did we, oh, we already took Zion. So I'd be still looking at a guy like maybe Nolan Smith is for the upside, but Jermaine Johnson is a dude who I'd be considering heavily. He's just one of those dudes with freaky upside. And I mean, this is a really good draft. So even Arnold um, Abikati, I think that's how you say it. I keep trying to listen about this shit, but he's old as hell. Still, it's really damn good. He's a damn good prospect. Could see him being brought on just for extra rotation. I just don't think that you need to right now. I don't think that's much of a need. I think after a wide receiver like David Bell could actually give you that upside. You want a perimeter wide receiver. He is somebody who has that upside to be a number one. He plays extremely well, especially this year. He's been lighting it up, so I'm very happy for him. Didn't really see all the pizzazz that some people like Broshmo see, but I still think he's easily worth it. Really good wide receiver right there. Number 66, the Giants. I know we already, I'm pretty sure we got you guys, DeMarvin Leal, as well as um, Darian Kennard. And then we got Isaiah Likely. I've gotten some pushback on the Likely pick, which makes sense. If you guys are trying to get away from a receiving tight end, it might not be the best choice to go after a receiving tight end. Still, we're here. I think going after a coverage linebacker wouldn't be a terrible idea. And I think a guy who's amazing is Owen Papo. I think he'd be a really good addition with Alexander and honestly, just lock it in. I'd be considering a running back at this spot heavily, but we're still going to take Owen Papo here. Linebacker out of Auburn. He is the best linebacker on the board, not named Henry Toto, which of course we're assuming is going to be going back to school. Number 67 with the Texans. Texans, I think this is a great spot to go. I've been doing this for a couple of drafts now. Wandale Robinson. You know, you got Philip Lindsay for a reason. I think he's pretty much Philip Lindsay, and he's a lot younger. He's going to be cheaper in the long run. Get Wondell Robinson and have another gadget player on this team help out Davis Mills, or I'm pretty sure that we got um, Desmond Ritter to this team as well, or Desmond Ritter in whatever you guys want to do, whatever you guys like. Number 68 with the Jets, J-E-T-S, somehow beating the Bengals. Yes, this is recorded on Monday, so happy Monday. I'm going to I'm going to post the same day. Um, I would be considering a legit power running back here. And that is Zach Charbonnet. I think that's a great fit too. You could look at tight ends here, but if I'm not mistaken, there's nobody I'd really want to take. Even Josh Wiley, who I love and Greg Dolchich, just don't think that that's going to complete them like a legit power running back would. And like Zach, also Zach's pretty much a three down running back. So him and Michael Carter, uh, it's going to be able to save a bit of long longevity for both of those guys, which we all know running back doesn't have a very long lifespan in the NFL. So again, you got like Zach Charbonnet represent my boy. It's worth it. 
Number 69 with the Jags, I think edge is something that we can definitely look at. And I'm looking at a guy like Nolan Smith to be a really high upside outside linebacker, similar to what you guys are hoping to get in Caleb on chase on. We could talk again about um, a Bika team or Jermaine Johnson. I'm going to go Nolan Smith though. I do like Nolan Smith a lot. So we're going to go Nolan Smith right here. Number 70 with the Rams. We traded back. I think this is a good spot to look at a tackle. Um, even where's Kellen Dyche? He's a really, he's a damn good prospect, man. I think he deserves some respect and I think he'll be picked up by the Rams. I do. I think that's a good scheme fit. Number 71 with the giants back on the board. Let's do it. Brees Hall. Uh, I did it last draft. I think it's worth it. This draft, you know, Brees Hall is a three down running back. Saquon Barkley, you can't pay him. You really can't. It's all, it, I'm pretty sure you guys all know that. You guys don't want to accept it because I don't either. I loved him coming out. I think everybody did too. It just sucks, but Brees Hall is an absolute game wrecker. I love him. I'm pretty sure that we've already taken off the guy who just put up five touchdowns, Kenneth Walker. Otherwise, I'd be considering him possibly over Brees Hall. He's been having a great season. 72 with the Seahawks. Seahawks, you guys got a really damn good steal. Pretty sure you guys got um, – did you guys do my shy? I think you guys got my shy Sanders in this draft. Yeah. So that's a pretty good start. I think outside corner could be something we definitely look at. Mikhail Wright might just be way too good to pass up on. Tackle, I just don't think that the value after Kellen Dice is nearly as good. Again, projecting Zion Nelson going back to school. For you guys who are like, what about Zion? That's why. Um, interior defensive line, we could go after a guy like Perrion Winfrey, who just hasn't been very good against the run. We do need extra presence there, as well as Haskell Garrett. I love Haskell Garrett. Even Devontae Wyatt, really good options here. But I'm going to sneak in Mikhail Wright right here. Uh, no pun intended. But he's a, he's a talented corner, gets torched quite a bit. But I see the upside there, similar to how I saw Campbell last year. Uh, he sticks very tight in coverage. So if he's able to develop those ball tracking skills and changes a couple of those um, losses for P, uh, P, PBUs or even INTs, that might change everyone's opinion of him. Especially in the third round, it's worth taking a shot on. Number 73 with Washington. I would definitely still look at the offensive line here, 100%. I'd look at a project like Rasheed Walker. And like I would take a good, long look at him. Definitely somebody who I think could work on this team. Uh, obviously, if Zion Nelson was on the board, I would say, hey, take a shot on him. Interior offensive line. I want to talk about Lasisha Smith here. He is really damn good out of um, Virginia Tech. Ed Ingram as well. He is just another one of those mauler types, so... Don't know if it's exactly what you guys would be looking for, but I would heavily consider one of those two guys. Uh, Lachisa Smith is, he's worth definitely. I mean, obviously, look, he is a talented ass dude. He's athletic as hell. So we could certainly go with that. And I think that's what we are going to go with. Uh, Lachisa Smith, you got to continue building the offensive line because you got a new quarterback, Malik Willis. You're going to need to give him some time and you're going to be able to need to establish that run game. If you're losing Brandon Scherf, I think a guy like Lysia Smith is a good option. Personally, I think you should sign maybe a one-year contract to guard in free agency and bring on a guy like Lysia or Ed Ingram in, uh, in this draft and be able to grow them a year just to make sure that you have an instant impact as well as a long-term answer. But regardless, number 74, the Niners, I'm actually starting to believe wide receivers in need. I'm starting to believe it. Uh, it, it hurts to say that because Ayuk is someone who I really love. But – I think you need a bigger presence out there. That being said, we already got a corner on the team. I could look at another one. I do think that going after Tyke Smith, especially at this point in the draft, is the best option. You guys are still looking for a slot. You drafted one last year. You guys were dying for Michael Carter, who's balling out for the Jets. I do know that uh, as a fact. But just the slot corner role is still bad. The secondary is such a huge need. I think wide receiver is overpopulated as it is in the NFL. So you guys can get plenty of targets around like, damn, Dante Pettis, speaking of the Niners, is going off pretty much for the New York Giants here and there. Like, you know, you can pick up dudes who actually go off. I think safety slot corner hybrids are more of a rarity, especially for a team that needs secondary help like you guys. I think Tyke Smith as well as Martin Emerson are a very good way to start off this draft. Number 75, we got the Patriots. Now, Patriots, I could definitely see them going after Lewis Sign. 
but they're more of a small school type of guy. Uh, like that's a more small school type of team. Not saying that they're going to do that. Of course they draft guys out of Alabama, but you know, I would still consider going after another receiver. I just don't think that that's the right option. Perry on Winfrey might be a little too good to give, um, to like not take at this point. I'm yeah, it's, it's a tough one for the Patriots because they got everybody. They really don't need anybody. Uh, I think they go with an upside guy, Jermaine Johnson out of Florida state, just continue adding depth to that edge room and continue getting rid of your dudes that you have and getting compensatory picks and replacing them with dudes who are going to be more of an impact is ridiculous what the Patriots do, but Jermaine Johnson has the upside. I think that's a very good pick for the Patriots. Again, for the long term, it's very good. Matt Judon, he's there for a couple of years. Again, he is kind of getting older as well. He will be up there in the 30s, especially by the end of his contract. A guy like Jermaine Johnson will be coming into his prime. He will be probably around like 26, 27 by the time that you guys are going to be looking for a guy to step up as a true edge one. That is perfect for a guy with freaky upside like Jermaine Johnson. Number 76, I am going to definitely look at some dudes to potentially replace a guy like Kyle Fuller as well as Bryce Callahan. Um, Caleb Evans is a guy, I mean, he's a transfer from Tulsa. You just see the height and weight ratio. It's, it's a really, really good build. Uh, Jermaine Waller could be something you do look at. I just don't think that corner is where you're going to target immediately in this draft because that was an emphasis on the last one. You guys have unbelievable depth too. really big tip of my hat to, um, to the whole organization here. I think going after a linebacker with some upside might be the right way to go especially with coverage upside. So I'm looking heavily at DeMarvion Overshown here. He is very light. He's going to definitely be more of that will style of uh, linebacker, but you need a root. You need a guy who's in rotation that can actually cover. And Johnson is a beast, right? He's amazing. Josie Jewell is an amazing run stuffer. So you got a blitzer and a run stuffer. I'm looking at a guy who can pass cover a little bit more. You guys can even look at Micah McFadden. He just, he's a little bit, um, he's a little bit on the heavier. I mean, on the lighter side, especially for a Mike. I think going after a guy like DeMarvion Overshone has that safety linebacker hybrid potential. Just take him. It's a third round. You know, you got uh, Baron Browning in there as well, who's going to be developing. DeMarvion Overshone could just be that weird tweener that, you know, you could find a role for him. And I think that that's a good pick right there. Number 77 with the Colts. Oh, Colts. What do we do for you guys? Um, I could definitely see them going after some more depth at corner. You know, you look at a guy with high upside like Caleb Evans or Jermaine Waller as somebody who I would also target. I think that it's a good way to build up your roster by getting guys like Jermaine Waller to continue developing under veterans like Xavier Rhodes. Obviously, I don't know if Xavier Rhodes will actually be there next year. However, under the condition that you do have at least some form of veteran presence, getting a guy out of VT is always a good thing to do, especially if they're on the defensive backside. 78 with the Jags. This is Perry on Winfrey. I think getting a guy with upside like Perry on is certainly worth it. And I would consider getting Haskell Garrett or Devonte White there as well. But I think the pass rush upside is there. And if you tweak his run defense, he'll be okay. 79 with the bears. Who this is a need for a tackle. We're going to be getting a guy who is six foot eight. If I'm not mistaken, he's six foot eight, 315 pounds. Obina Eze out of Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, he's just, you need to get a tackle desperately. And I think he has the tools and the development to be able to play and be an imp instant impact. So take him, try to enjoy it, keep going with it. Number 80 with the Ravens. Ravens, I'd be looking at Edge right now just because it's such a damn good class. You look at Zachary Carter, you can use him as um, as an interior guy as well. 285 pounds, just, just go off. Dude, Zachary Carter is so dangerous. 81 with the Falcons. I think going into your defensive line wouldn't be a terrible idea here. Uh, Devontae Wyatt has been arguably as good as Jordan Davis. He is lethal. Haskell Garrett also really damn good on the pass rush side. I think Devontae Wyatt would be a good addition to this team. Now, running back would be a really good one as well. I just don't see anyone that I'm actually ready to just say, hey, I'm going to take him. James Cook is one that I'd probably consider here. I'm going to take Devontae Wyatt. Uh, he's just a really high upside interior defensive lineman. Just take it. Enjoy it. Number 82 with the Steelers. I am heavily considering going wide receiver here with a guy like Jalen Tolbert. Uh, just a guy who's a lot larger. 
He's dealt with inaccuracy with his quarterbacks. Uh, certainly something I'd look for. Corner, I just don't see anybody. Like, Nehemiah might be the best guy left, and I just don't see it. I really don't. We're going to go Jalen Tolbert here out of South Alabama. Just a larger wide receiver. We already know the Steelers go after these dudes. He's going to be able to get some good separation as well as uh, it's just I think he's going to make up for how terrible his stats might be because his quarterback is exponentially worse than he is. He bails out his quarterback so much. His drop rate, it's not really much of a thing to be concerned about. 83 with the Panthers. Uh, we already got, I believe, Kenyon Green to be uh, – no, we got um, – what's his name? Ekem in the first round. Checking what we did in the second for him because I don't know if we actually did have a second round pick. We did not. So I believe that was traded for Sam Donald anyways. Regardless, we're here in third. Third, I would be heavily considering going after a quarterback here if there are any left. I don't think Tanner McKee comes out. I don't think Spencer Rattler comes out. That means we're not going to be getting a quarterback. We will be looking maybe on the offensive line side again. You still need some help on the inside. Ed Ingram wouldn't be a bad option. I do think that going after guard, because the guards have not been playing well either, wouldn't be too shabby. Of an idea just build that off uh, build that offensive line might be the right move i will say tight end could be something you target i know we already have a guy there uh got rid of dan arnold though frees up a little bit of room uh we got the kid out of uh notre dame that was the guy i'm referencing i'm but i blank on his name every single time and i was a big fan of him too but there's guys like josh wiley and greg dolchich here that could be really good options regardless i think i'm still going to be going offensive line route I do like Ed Ingram's upside. He plows through dudes. There's a lot to really like about this guy. So let's take him and continue helping out a guy in Sam Darnold or whoever the hell the quarterback's going to be. You just need help at this point. So if it's Sam Darnold, see, so give him one more year. Sure, at least the next quarterback will have a good offensive line. Number 84 with the Browns again. I think this is a good time to go edge. Um, we're going to go oof, this. There's actually a lot of really, really good edges left on the board. Um, I'm going to, well, Brenton Cox is really good, but a also, I think a is a little bit more of what the Browns would be looking for. We're going to go Arnold, a And that's me liking Brenton Cox. It's just, this is a really good edge class. So it's kind of tough to say that, Hey, we're just going to randomly ditch all these other dudes just because, you know, I like Brenton Cox. No, like this draft's actually damn good. 85 with the Bills on the board. Who, I mean, we could definitely look for a wide receiver. Uh, like, because again, Emmanuel Sanders ain't going to last forever. He's not that young. And I mean, it's just, I think John Mechie's upside is ridiculous. We could look at a tight end. I just don't think that's going to work. Could look at a power back like Isaiah Spiller. I just don't think the Bills do that. I think they're perfectly content with what they're at. Uh, John Mechie is too good to pass up on. This is where you take a shot on a wide receiver and say, hey, screw it. We'll see what happens. Um, speaking of a team that might want to take a shot on a wide receiver, look at the Chargers right here. Uh, we could definitely look at tight end as well. But uh, Romeo Dubs is on the board, and this guy's a freak. I think that there's a little bit too much disrespect going on with Romeo Dubs, and we're going to take him. We are. We need a deep threat for the Chargers, and I think that's a really good idea. Number 87 with the Texans. Texans, I think getting the best player available is probably the best thing to do. Lewis Sign might be the best option for us. You know, we have enough running backs. We have, I think, at this point, enough wide receivers, too. Tight ends, we're going to be fine. Offensive line, I think we'll be okay. Lewis Sign is the guy with probably the most upside at the moment. So we're going to take him. Again, there's a big drop-off after him for the safety class. So it's a good option. Number 88 with the Cowboys. Cowboys, this is a good spot to get, actually, depth because this team doesn't need much, to be honest with you guys. I think Brent Cox would be an excellent addition to this team. I think you could work in that Randy Gregory role as an understudy to him. So we're going to be sticking to that. Number 89 with the Titans. Titans, I think this is a good spot to go tight end and go after a guy in Greg Dolchich out of UCLA. You guys are going to be in a better spot than this if Derrick Henry actually is out for the season. So praying for you guys because honestly, I don't hate the Titans that much. Uh, the Titans, I... You know, I, I, I'm fond of them. I'm fond of them. It's just a little bit annoying to see that a team is kind of carried by a running back really heavily. No disrespect to Ryan Tannehill, but that's just all respect to how damn good Derrick Henry is. It's just going to be a big impact to the team, and I'd be very surprised to see if 
if the Titans could maintain their prowess without the man himself. Number 90 with the Bengals. I think this could be a really good spot to continue developing in your secondary. You guys have something going, I believe, with – what's his name? Um, he came from the Cowboys. I think Jordan Lewis. And I think that's a really good thing. You guys need to continue developing that, though. Nehemiah Pritchett, you look at him, 6'1", 180 from Auburn. He's a really good uh, corner as well. I think he has that upside. Caleb Evans is another dude you could look at, but – to be honest, I think this is the right move. Continue developing that secondary and get some more uh, some more youth in there. That's also cheaper because you're going to have to pay Joe Burrow eventually. You might want to have some guys who continue developing like Nehemiah Pritchett to be able to go in there and light it up for y'all. Number 91 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this is a good spot to go after a guy who can actually pass rush from the interior like Haskell Garrett. I think that's going to be your best option. And I'm a big fan of Haskell. I think he's worth a second round pick. I think he has upside that is uh, really damn good. And he's proven that he's a good pass rusher. So I don't know why he's getting as much hate as he is, but he ain't going to get it anymore. So we're getting Haskell Garrett out of the Ohio State University. Rams back on the board. Oof. I think the Rams can continue developing their offensive line, but we all know they're not going to do that. I think going after another corner and a Caleb Evans might be a really good option. Another one I'd look at is Riley Moss out of Iowa. They take guys who are not very fast, even though Riley Moss is a track athlete. I think that is upside. I keep saying that. I, I this is the this is the draft where or this is the round that you take upside more than anything. I think he's proven that he's a really good Moss threat. No pun intended. But he also has a lot more to prove. Iowa's a good school for corners. I think that the Rams are going to need some extra youth in that corner core as well. He's going to be a good addition, good rotation guy. He's going to be able to keep all those guys healthy, and he's going to step up when guys get injured. That's exactly what you need at your third-round pick right there. Number 93 with the Raiders. Raiders, I think going after maybe an offensive lineman at this point wouldn't be too shabby. There are some guys with some more upside, like Rasheed Walker. You are looking for a tackle to be what you hoped Alex Leatherwood would be. Not exactly what you're looking for in terms of size to weight ratio, but again, I'm saying this. This is the guy who is just pure upside. Uh, he doesn't really have much to offer right now, but it seems like some of the Raiders would do. Rashid Walker at a Penn State, at least have some hope at tackle. Number 94 with the Giants. Just kidding. The Packers. I saw that G. I always think the Giants. Uh, the Packers, I think going after a linebacker wouldn't be too shabby. Apparently, Devondre Campbell's going off. <laughs> whoop de doo Don't think that's going to be consistent. That being said, I think going after offensive line would also be a good option. Going after another receiver would also be a good option because they needed one. They needed another one last draft, and they finally just got one. I'm pretty sure that that was um, the kid out of USC, Drake London, and it was, but – you know, Drake London is arguably a slot wide receiver. I think this is where we see Justin Ross also go. Funnily enough, my 2020 mock draft, Justin Ross went to the Packers with the first pick. So just saying, I've been saying it for a while. Uh, number 95 with the Ravens. Ravens, I think that this could be a good spot for a team to potentially trade up for a tight end like Josh Wiley. Uh, there's not many other ones that are worth drafting. I think Jaleel Billingsley is going to go back. That's why I'm also not drafting him. So a team that could use them is the Jets. So the Jets are going to be moving up with the Ravens. So same conference. And they're going to be trading up. And you know what? They're not going to pay too heavy of a penny. You know, it's maybe a sixth round pick, a fifth round pick, and ask for a seventh in return could do it. We'll ask for a next year's sixth in return. So there you go. You get your return on your investment. So we're going to be trading up, and we're going to be selecting Josh Wiley out of Cincinnati. That's going to be where you get your impact. He's a kid with a lot of potential. Another guy who could return, but I don't think Leonard Taylor is going to be coming out. So either he's going to need a transfer or else he's been putting up a couple touchdown games over the past couple of weeks. Take that momentum, come into the NFL and be able to light it up from there. Cards, I think this is another good spot to go corner. Caleb Evans is 6'2", 200 pounds. I think the size to weight ratio is unbelievable. Take that upside and add some extra depth to your corner core. 97 with the... Dolphinos, Dolphins, y'all need a power back pretty desperately. I'm going to give you guys Isaiah Spiller. You guys, you need somebody better than Malcolm Brown. And I think Isaiah Spiller is that guy for you. 98 with the Lions on the board. 
Lions, we've unfortunately taken the majority of the corners as well as the safeties at this point. So looking at the next best thing, you do so have guys like Kyron Williams on the board who I, I'm not going to draft. I don't like Kyron Williams that much, but you got some more edges that you could be adding to this team. You could, of course, add guard depth with another Arkansas guy. Um, Sawyer as well. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, Sawyer played a tackle at one point, right? Um, yeah. So he's very versatile. I think that's worth taking. You know, finally taking another Georgia player. Obviously, former quarterback, Matt Stafford, Georgia. Uh, be able to fill up the offensive line. I just don't think Vitae was that worth of, a, uh, of that big contract. But I think you guys know that at this point. 99 with the Dolphins again. Weird spot. I think this is a good time to get an outside edge rusher. So I'm going to try to find a guy who's around that 230. Holy shit. I did not know Trevon Walker weighed that much. I'm going to look for a guy probably around like 245 range to be able to play on the outside because I think Jalen Phillips does a good enough job on the inside. Uh, right now, I wouldn't mind if Xavier Thomas actually stepped in. I know his weight is 265, but Unfortunately, it looks like we're kind of screwed in terms of the guys who are a little bit lighter. Isaiah Thomas might be lighter. Man, he is definitely not. I'm just bugging on the guy's weights right now. So that's unfortunate. We're actually going to trade back. So there are some teams that could use some edge help. Uh, I'm, I'm actually seeing what pick we are. I thought I was like, damn, the Cardinals are up again. But, you know, let's see other teams that are other players that other teams might be looking to add to their squad. I'm looking for a team that actually wants to add a receiving back. So trying to find one because there's a guy who deserves some respect who is still on the board that most people probably wouldn't take. So even the Steelers might want to get another running back just to be able to make sure Najee Harris isn't going to be a dead horse. I will say the Falcons could use a running back and pretty desperately. So Falcons are going to be moving up here with the Dolphins. I just don't think the Dolphins have enough value on the board. Uh, we're going to be trading up here, offering our seventh round pick. Just kidding. Sixth round pick. Hopefully getting a seventh in return. Let's just try to get one another year. Get that trade through. Be able to at least get something in our running back room going. And I might go Britton Brown. Just kidding. Not going Britton Brown. Going James Cook out of Georgia. Uh, I have a third round. Uh, like I have a, like a mid third round grade on this guy. He's an absolute stud. I don't know why nobody's talking about him. Just because he's buried in a rotation. Who cares? This guy's a freaking beast. Uh, he could be worth a second round pick. I would not care if a team took him in the second. He's that damn good. Number 100 with the Rams once again, or no, we traded back. I was like, hold up a second. Um, pretty sure we traded back. Regardless, I think you take the upside here with the edge players. You know, I think that guy like, I know Trevon, Wa I, I know these Georgia players are just ridiculous. Uh, Trevon Walker's worth this pick. I just want to see if anybody else catches my eye as somebody who I'd probably take. Uh, honestly, we're going to do it. Xavier Thomas out of Clemson, kind of worth it. His athleticism is ridiculous. Uh, he was supposed to be a top 10 pick when he was first starting. Like, he was projected that. It's fallen off quite a bit, but nobody to train you better than Aaron Donald at being able to be a beast and reaching your potential. Number 101 with the Ravens back on the board. I think a corner could be a pretty good option at this point. Um, dude, Noah Daniels is worth it. His, his injury history is concerning, but that is why he's here. First and second round grade, Noah Daniels, take him, have some really good edge, uh, some really good corner depth and be able to go from there. Oh, Saints. I don't know how the hell you just beat uh, Tom Brady with Trevor Simeon, but you do you. I think maybe a quarterback might be the right route to go. Again, fortunately, Jake Hayner is the only next guy. And I actually really like Hayner a lot more than what a lot of people do. Even Brock Purdy, it's still not worth this pick. I will say that. Uh, interior defensive line, I, I could still look at Tyler Davis as a good option here. But this is where you go for upside. You go for a guy like Trevon Walker out of Georgia and end off the draft on a fun pick like that. So let me know what you guys think. See you guys later. Peace.